to this week's uh, paint, Edu Paint and Paint Club. Uh, this week we're going to be covering color theory and pretty high level, just like a big overview on color theory and what that is to hopefully help people pick out better colors for their minis. I have a bunch of stuff sitting on my table here that I'm going to show you throughout all this. Um, and then feel free to, if you're watching live, ask any questions. If you are following along on the YouTube, uh, feel free to reach out and email. I am here on Mated Brush on Instagram. That is my personal account. Feel free to reach out there as well. And if you want to join up the Discord, there's myself and a bunch of other great mini painters in there as well that are more than happy to help you out. Um, I know a bunch of great guys on there and girls. Um, I use guys dude everything's dude my dog's a dude um to ask questions like i've been trying to work on doing layering um and glazing if you don't know me personally i went through art school um i actually have three degrees in design for primarily like websites and stuff like that um so color theory and fine art stuff was a big part of my education um and i think that just years of picking out colors has helped me with mine. Um, so when you're doing a mini, big things are color and contrast. So those are some things we're going to go over today. Um, but before we dive into that, we're going to do our sponsor. Our sponsorship is Barthol's Marvels. Um, Lance and his crew are great guys. They are handmade goods for your adventuring life. They are licensed 3D printing retailer for Patreon, such as. Isashi Kyojin, Print and Paint Miniatures, Lord of the Print, and many more. Um, he is working on doing some more things through like Kickstarter, Patreons, and stuff like that. Also offers Hero Forge printing. Um, I have used him for my personal Hero Forge printings, and it's a great dude. So check him out on Etsy and Instagram, Arthur's Marvels, all one word, and hit him up for whatever you need. He's probably going to help me out. I'm doing the encounter terrain um, contest again, the 10 by 10, and I'm probably going to hit them up for some items there. Um, so while people filter in, I'm just going to dive on in. And like I said, if anybody has questions, please interrupt. This is what we're doing this for. So today is more or less a lecture class. It's not a hands-on class. I have no paints out. I have no brushes out. I have none of that stuff out. Um, so, but if you have questions on that, stop me for that too. I'm going through color theory stuff. So what is color theory? So basically color theory um, is how to choose colors using primarily the color wheel. Um, when you're starting out and getting a mini, there's multiple ways and places you can find inspiration. If you're doing something like D&D &D or you're using like a WizKids mini. Most WizKids minis have a picture on the back of colors. Or you can use the Monster Manual or Mordecai's Tome of Foes or whatever that has the monster art and you can follow that. I do that a lot to keep monsters recognizable for when I throw them on a table. Um, or you can go completely off script. Um, Warhammer does the same thing. They supply arts and they keep their stuff pretty much like a paint by numbers. But you can go pretty much off script like I did with my Wyvern. I know a lot of people saw this wyvern that I painted a little while ago on Instagram. Um, wyverns in the monster manual are supposed to be like this pinky, brown, tan, flush color, and I didn't want to do that. So you can use things like imagination, or you can use things like I turn to nature a lot. So if I was, if this creature was to be alive and be in nature, what would it look like? So to get this scheme, I was looking at um, pictures on like Google Images of things like in Komodo dragons, iguanas, etc., to help me find this particular scheme. And it's all completely acceptable. And it's whatever you want to do. There's no, not to be all Bob Ross, <laughs> but it's, it's your little world. Paint your little happy trees. You know what I mean? If you don't want your goblins to be like the green or like the yellow, and you want them to be like blue goblins, like, like evil Smurfs, paint evil Smurfs, do it up. Um, so, but to help you get those colors, we're going to go through a bunch of stuff here. Um, so, like I said, first things first is introducing the color wheel. This is a traditional color wheel. You can find your own in a variety of places. If you've ever ordered from like Green Stuff World, 
some of their stickers they sent are actually a color wheel, which I find handy. You can find these at any art supply store, any hobby shop, or you can go on on like Google Images and find something. Um, Trash the Risa, would you say painting a model will help generate monster making? I am I am a prosthetic makeup artist, but I have finished a term on sculpting and crafting my own monsters. I was disappointed with the outcome. Let me flip the camera back. Um, as it was out of my comfort zone, but I wanted to develop more in this section. I mean, I mean I've never I've never made my own models. I know for me, using colors from different areas of life help me pick out colors. I've gotten inspiration for minis and things from movies, from cartoons, for example. You know, this is my entry for last month's um, 10 by 10 challenge. The green slime water in here, this color palette I pulled from Rick and Morty. Um, it Their explosions are always like a lime green and I'm a sucker for lime green and I knew I wanted to do green. And I saw, and I would just like freeze frame and pause the screen and get green. And then they use a little bit of yellow and then like a cream color. So, I mean, if you're doing prosthetic makeup, that's awesome. You, that there's a total cool place to do that from as far as it's sculpting minis. I've never actually done that. Um, I took sculpting classes and that was fun, but that's about as close to sculpting and crafting my own monsters, but crafting your own terrain could be really cool, really cool way to apply that. Um, but as far as inspiration, you can get it from anywhere. I, I like I said, I use Google Images a lot, movies, TV shows. If you saw, if you're doing prosthetic stuff for movies and you see something that's really captivating, you can always add stuff to minis too, using um, green stuff to like mold different things. I've changed. I don't have anything on my table here, but I've modified minis before. Um, so I mean, you could go down that route too. Um, but for colors, and to get back into the whole color bit, um, basic color wheel is going to be, and I apologize if I'm missing questions, I'm going to be going back and forth between two different screens. I only have one monitor. Um, the color wheel essentially is a chart representing relationships between colors. Uh, the classic color wheel shows hues arranged in a circle, like you see there on the screen, connected by lines or shapes called harmonies. Now mine, I'm not showing you the lines and shapes yet because I want to get towards that. Um, but if you find them online, a lot of times they already have all these crazy lines. I didn't want to confuse anybody with connecting the dots without understanding what those dots are. Um, there are three primary color sections in the color wheel. You have your primary colors, which is red, yellow, and blue. In traditional color theory and using paint and pigments, primary colors are the three pigment colors that cannot be mixed or formed by any combination of other colors. All other colors are derived from these hues. This is also true if you've done anything in print design. Um, like I said, I'm a graphic designer by trade, so anything I do in print, like books, magazines, billboards, etc., they're all done in CMYK, which is how print presses work. It's the same deal. It's a red, a yellow, a blue, and then the K is black um, to get all the colors in the rainbow. Um, so that is a great way to do that. You can also add in the secondary colors, which are the red, yellow, I'm sorry, green, orange, and purple, or sometimes violet. Those are the secondary colors. These are colors formed by mixing the primary colors. So when you're a little kid, you always know if you mix your red paint and your blue paint, you're going to get a purple. That's what the secondary colors are. And then finally, we have the tertiary colors. These are the in-betweens, the yellow orange, the red orange, the red purple, etc. These are the colors formed by mixing a primary and a secondary color together. That's why the hue is a two word name, such as blue, green, red, violet, yellow, orange, etc. All of these comprise together and make up the color wheel. Now there's also two ways of viewing the color wheel colors in and of themselves. You have the cool color side um, of the color wheel, which are the cooler colors. If you think of like snow and winter and ice are always like blues or 
um, water at a, on like a Caribbean beach is blue. It's nice and cooling. It's calming. And then you'll have your warm side, which is yellows, oranges, reds, and then the yellow green along with it. Um, if you ever played around with like a FLIR um, thermal camera or you've seen it on a TV show, all the hots are always reds and yellows and all the colds are always blues. Um, this is how you can think of things in that way too. And think of things like, you know, that, you know, that white sand or that orangey tan sand on that same beach is going to be a lot hotter than that blue water or fires are always the oranges versus ice being blue. Um, these are great ways to view this color wheel. Um, and then using the color wheel when you're picking out your, your miniature and your colors for one of your miniatures here, you generally want to start with one or two base colors and then build from there. And this is where those lines come in. If you look up one on like Google images, a color wheel, you'll see all those lines that we were talking about earlier. Um, they're called the harmonies and these are on the color wheel to help you find colors that complement or match each other. And there are actually six of these. So of these harmonies, you have complementary, monochromatic, analogous, split complements, triadic, and, and uh, I always struggle with this one, tetradatic, uh, tetradic, got it. So complementary color scheme uses two opposite colors on the wheel, like yellow and purple, red and green, etc. Monochromatic color schemes use three different color values of that same color. So this would be like if you've ever seen a black and white photo or a Western photo, like the sepia tone, those are monochromatic. Um, analogous color schemes use three adjacent colors on the color wheel. Split complements use one color and then the two adjacent tertiary colors of its complement. Um, triadic are color schemes use three evenly spaced colors on the wheel. And tetradic are color schemes that use two complementary pairs. So example again to the complementary, the yellow and violet. Um, you can spin this line segment around through the whole wheel and do the red, orange, and blue, green. It could be yellow, orange, and blue, violet. It could be orange and blue. Um, these are great things and you can find them a lot in sport teams. So for example, I just pulled this example real quick. Um, no idea the political climate that was going to be happening, but Minnesota Vikings was just a good example because that's what I had on there. It's that purple and, and yellow. Um, also, you can think of LA Lakers if you're a baseball fan. Old school LA Kings if you're an NHL fan have that same thing. Um, we can go back to the complimentary bit. You know, the orange and blue, Denver Broncos, New York Mets, um, um, New York Islanders. A lot of sport teams carry this. The analogous is another one that you're going to be using a lot in mini painting, or at least I find myself using a lot in mini painting, are the three next to each other. So in this instance, it would be the yellow, orange, yellow, and yellow, green. And again, you can spin that around to however you want. Um, and there's a lot of examples of that you can find in nature, much like, you know, and this is a magazine spread that I found online, it uses these like clovers that are green and then they fade to the yellow green and then to the yellow. Um, the analogous are similar in hue usually and help create a smooth transition for one to another. Another one is, you know, some Van Gogh's sunflowers here. It's the yellow, yellow, orange, and then orange from the, from the color wheel here. So there's a lot of different things there that you can play with and can help you when you're doing your shading and stuff like that. Um, now you don't have to stick with the primarily tonal values that you see on my color wheel that I illustrated. Some color wheels actually show steps towards black and step towards white or showing you the different brightnesses and tonal values that you can create. These are generally called tints and shades, um, which are right here. So you have your main color in the middle, that'd be the violet from my color wheel. And then you have your shades which is that main color going darker and darker, getting towards black and your tints going lighter and lighter towards white. This can help you with your contrast. It can also be viewed as the monochromatic scheme and it will help you with your, sh can help you with your shading and highlighting in models. For example, I like doing things um, with like stones, like on my ground textures here. Oh, well, you can really see that guy. And this one, but stone, I generally do 
grays moving all the way up. Um, you can do that, like, for example, this miniature. It's my little, it's actually Reaper Hive Mind. I use it as an Elder Brain. It's pretty much purples and pinks all the way up. You could either argue this is an analogous because I move towards a, a redder pink or monochromatic because it's essentially a purple getting lighter and lighter to the brain. Um, you could argue that way. Complementary colors. Here's a good example of a complementary color of this leech I did with purple and then the green. Um, or here's a good complementary one along that purple and orange or purple and yellow rather is this hook whore I did in this purple and then a yellowed hook. But again, it's not that bright yellow. It's a tint of the yellow. It's like this is a very much darker purple. It's a shade of that purple. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So and the, so yeah. And then the last thing I know I've talked about it a little bit is contrast. A contrast or color context is how one color behaves in viewed in relation to another um, shape. So for example, pardon me, I'm just moving my notes here. So this can be the amount of one color in correlation to another tint or shade correlation. So for example, this little box array up here, the red appears more brilliant against the black background, but it's also somewhat duller against the white background. This can help you with things like eyes for your monster, really making them pop, or things like, again, this. There's a little bit of green here against this really dark purple. So having that little bit of bright, or on this guy, that bit of bright on everything else dark is going to make it pop more, where you know that bright against this one isn't as much, or the dark against here isn't as much. Uh, trying to see, or like the red on the white on this barbarian isn't as high of a contrast. Um, also, the orange against the, or the red on orange rather appears more lifeless or starts to vibrate. Um, it kind of blends in because they're very close in tonal value, but not in, they're not the same shade value or tint. Um, the red square, sorry, I'm reading my notes here. The red appears lifeless on the orange. In contrast, the blue with the blue green, it's got that more pop. Um, the red square also appears a little bit larger on the black than other background colors. So there, you can mess around with your contrast in this way. Um, also, this is another cool one that you can play with colors is the two purple bricks are actually in the center of these squares are actually the same color but with what's the background can play the trick on the eye making you think that those colors are actually different so if you don't have as many paints you can almost play a little bit of a trick and still perceive different colors with the eye um, also here's another cool example i found with again tints and shades this is pretty much duo toned it's an orange with one dark orange moving all the way up to lighter oranges and then a bunch of blue, you know, again, dark to light. And then the scale makes it pop. So, you know, some examples, I'm going to minimize this so I can see any comments or people watching, you know, again, sort of like the analogous, you could argue this is analogous with the green moving towards the yellow and then the tints moving towards white. I find a lot of times it's going to be a complementary or analogous and then using monochromatic to build up that. So like in the wings here, it started with a tan moving more towards white. You're going to do the same thing on skin, same thing on stonework. You're going to get move gray and go up lighter. Um, again, little pops of color against a dark background. This is a night walker I did in a, col in a color shift, but the little green on here makes, makes it pop out pops out against the darker background. So these are just some tricks you can do with things and complementary colors again, the green and the red. These are pretty red or yellows are pretty much the only colors that aren't like the steel. So the green and the red really pops against everything else. So, you know, it's kind of simple kind of you can go way complicated, like we can go into 
the psychology of colors if y'all want in a later episode about like why all hospitals are that taupe or gray color it's because it's more calming or why certain companies like to be blue it's because they're generally more tr viewed as trustworthy being blue um, green is more lively and fresh it's well, there's a whole deep world but basically the way i start with a mini is i try to find like a primary color or a unique identifier for the mini that i want to focus on you know like this elder brain pool here that i built for my elder brain i knew i wanted this to be really bright green so everything around it needed to be complementary which is why i stuck with red for the candles also it's an evil candle thing so that just kind of worked out in my favor and then doing the rest of it of being black and then these rust colors which are also a red that played very well into what i wanted to do also the tonal value of dark and light played well into what i wanted to do um you know guys like this i wanted to ensure that you read the skin and everything on him so i made sure my fur and everything else was nice and dark while his skin being light to kind of balance it out that's one of the name of the games with minis that i've talked to multiple like people who do competitions and judging competitions is contrast is part of the name of the game and i don't mean contrast paint i mean contrast as in a well-balanced miniature you know again like the little pops of tan here with the green or i guess it's primarily tan with pops of green you could argue you know a guy like this i started painting his leathers lighter lighter colored leathers like they were like more new but then the more i painted them realizing that his skin was going to be this light gray because i went very god of war style and the back is more like a snow wolf that the leathers needed to be darker to balance him out you know and using the snow so he was going to be very light so i needed to do the darks to balance him out to make him to make him good um so yeah i mean that's kind of my spiel on color theory i know it's super quick i hope it helps people again you can find a wheel similar to this you can take a screenshot of this if you'd really like um you can find other ones that have the step downs on google images you can find ones that have the lines already in there of the harmony lines on google images i just start with one or two like i said for my pool i started with like the yellow green and knew i needed things to be you know either using the split either red or violet in color and that's what i did with the with the pool there um you know the the brain is is more analogous with the violet blue violet and red violet you could argue i still kind of argue it's all blue violet but either way so if you're watching on youtube i'm going to actually stop the video here i hope you enjoyed what i had to offer i hope it was helpful in some way shape or form if you have any questions on what i said please comment on youtube or again message me on instagram i'd be more than happy to help if you want to be part of the discord to get help from me and other great painters um well great painters i don't consider myself a great pa painter but from great painters they're more than happy to help you and i can totally send you a link that's not a big deal um otherwise i hope to see you in two weeks I'm going to start painting some of the ghost boys that we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, so if you're on YouTube, have a good night and I'll talk to you soon.